ladies and gentlemen, welcome to this urgent update on the escalating conflict between the Ethiopian National Defense Forces, ENDF, and Amhara Fano forces in various regions of the Amhara region. We have just received the most recent reports from multiple sources, shedding light on the intensifying situation on the ground. In this video, we will delve into the specifics of the ongoing clashes and provide you with a comprehensive overview. Firstly, near Soa Meda in Woldia, situated in northern Wello, reports indicate a fierce battle between Fano forces and ENDF soldiers. In response to the heightened threat, the ENDF has deployed additional reinforcements to the area. Regrettably, it is reported that the ENDF has incurred substantial losses during these confrontations, highlighting the severity of the engagements. Moving on to Mota in Gojam, the situation is equally alarming. Fano forces successfully infiltrated the town from three different directions, seizing control temporarily. Their strategic approach involved ambushing ENDF soldiers before withdrawing from the town. This tactic appears to have been effective, further complicating the security dynamics in the region. In Legambo County, located in southern Wello, Fano forces have managed to wrest control from the ENDF after engaging in fierce battles. The aftermath of these clashes reveals that the Fano forces not only defeated the ENDF soldiers, but also captured a significant number of arms. The toll on the ENDF is evident, with reports indicating casualties among the soldiers, both killed and wounded. Turning our attention to Welica and Janit in Western Wello, the conflict has taken a toll on military assets. Two military trucks and one patrol vehicle have been reportedly destroyed, underscoring the intensity and destructive nature of the engagements in these areas. Lastly, in Kemedinga, Debra Tabor, Gasai, and Aja in southern Gonda, the Fano forces have asserted control, effectively cutting off the ENDF soldiers in these towns. This strategic maneuver further complicates the military situation, posing significant challenges for the ENDF in regaining control. From Kwarit in central Gojam, reports indicate that Fano forces have dealt a severe blow to the NDF soldiers, inflicting heavy losses. Shockingly, it is reported that 250 NDF soldiers have been killed in the fierce fighting. The situation remains dire as Fano forces continue to maintain their encirclement of the ENDF soldiers, adding a layer of complexity to the ongoing conflict in this strategic location. Moving on to Kori Meda, near Atai, situated in northern Shua, Fano forces have executed a successful ambush against the ENDF soldiers, resulting in significant casualties. The toll on the NDF in this region highlights the strategic prowess of Fano forces, showcasing their ability to disrupt and inflict losses on their adversaries. In Zuti to Juwaha, also located in northern Shua, intense fighting has erupted between Fano forces and the ENDF soldiers. The nature of the conflict in this area remains fluid, with both sides engaged in fierce confrontations, further contributing to the complexity of the overall situation. Shifting our focus to Mida and Maranya in Meribeti, northern Shua, reports describe a short but intense fight between the conflicting forces. The brevity of the encounter does not diminish its significance, as it underscores the volatility and unpredictability characterizing the clashes in this region. In a significant development, Fano and Amhara forces have successfully captured Janeta in South Wolo. This marks a strategic gain for the Fano Amhara forces, further altering the territorial landscape and the balance of power in the ongoing conflict. In the latter part of his discussion with the state run Fana Broadcasting Corporate, FBC, Ethiopian Defense Chief of Staff, FM, Berhanu Jula, responded to a range of inquiries posed by FBC journalists. The topics covered included military diplomacy, the threat posed by al-Shabaab, and the broader conflict landscape 
in Ethiopia, among other subjects. The broadcast was titled Interview with Defence Chief of Staff Field Marshal Berhanu Jula on Current Affairs of the Country, signalling that the content extended beyond purely military issues. Instead, the Defence Chief delved into political matters, seemingly defending the existing state of affairs. Addressing military diplomacy, he asserted that the Ethiopian military is highly sought after due to its capability to undertake a mission in a difficult situation. Using his recent visit to Tanzania as an illustration, he emphasized that the Ethiopian Defense Force is highly sought after based on the values it upholds. On the topic of al-Shabaab, he indicated, we are only using a limited force in Amhara and Oromia regions, implying the presence of forces capable of addressing such challenges. In response to critiques about the security situation in the country and calls for the Defence Force to withdraw to barracks, he expressed his sentiments vehemently, stating, Ayagabachewum, an Amharic phrase translating to, it is none of their business. This conveyed his belief that the Defence Force has a mission whenever the nation faces threats, either internally or from external adversaries. In addressing criticisms against the Defence Force, he suggested that it is targeted because the enemy recognises that the Defence Force is the strength of Ethiopia. In discussing internal security matters, his tone suggested a perspective that views defending and protecting the ruling party as a national obligation. Political dissent, according to him, seemed to be equated with terrorist activity, framing planned anti-war demonstrations as a cover for forces whose spine is struck by the Defence Force. He expressed concerns about the potential for seizing power by force, stating, It is a different configuration, and it is not possible to take power by force and rule like before. He issued a warning that if an armed group were to seize power forcibly, it would lead to the disintegration of Ethiopia resulting in civil war, especially given the widespread availability of weapons. Furthermore, he criticized Ethiopian society for its conflict mentality, noting the long history of internal strife. Despite acknowledging the protracted conflicts, he externalized many problems disregarding significant political issues and existential threats stemming from radical ethnic nationalism currently dominant at the federal level. The response to his interview from many politically engaged Ethiopians on social media has been notably unfavorable. There is a growing concern over the increasing involvement of the Defence Force in political matters, particularly when aligning with the interests of the ruling government. The ethnic-based federal structure of the Ethiopian government, despite its constitutional foundation, continues to fuel unprecedented ethnic violence. While the Defence Force claims to be non-ethnic, it defends a system perpetuating ethnic violence and one founded on ethnic ideology. Ongoing conflicts persist in the country, particularly in the Amhara and Oromia regions.